Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Kate. I've got one of the sharks joining me today, Barbara Corcoran. First of all, how exciting is it to be here at the Paley Center and talking with your fellow sharks? Oh, come on. I see so much of those sharks. I don't even want to see them. I told them it was called off so they didn't show up. <laughs> New season. Congratulations. Yep. Thank you. Is it blow your mind that this show is still incredibly popular and still kicking ass? Uh, not so much, because when we first shot the show, nobody knew if it was going to be a success. But what I noted is all the camera guys were fully engaged, and they asked us a ton of questions after the cameras went off. And I thought, hmm, they're interested. Somebody's going to get excited about this show. What do you think it is about Shark Tank that keeps it a fan favorite? There's a lot. And here's my PR line. Ready? It's inspirational, <laughs> which is true. Uh, it makes people believe that they too can do it and become rich fast, and it's never fast. But more importantly, people get to weigh in. Oh, I wouldn't have bought that one. I think he's going to buy it. I think that entrepreneur is no good. I think this guy's smart. Why not I think of that? So people have an opinion throughout the whole show. And so it's engaging. And that's not my PR line, okay? <laughs> it should be your PR line, even if it is. But it's true, it's true. Yeah. When you look at all the investments you made, what's been your one favorite? Um, of course, Cousins Main Lobster. Uh, I was just watching the update on that, by the way. They're 31. They're drop-dead gorgeous. I met them when they were 27. They take photos of us together, and they're nice enough to airbrush my face and send it back so I look like I'm their age. <laughs> and they're making me a ton of money, and they're great entrepreneurs, but mostly because they're darn good looking. Was there one that you kick yourself that you didn't invest in? Um, there have been probably a few, but there was only one last week that Lori stole from me, and she took me by storm, and I still haven't forgiven her. The woman pitched her product, and Lori said to her immediately, I'll pay full price, but I need to know now in 10 seconds, and the woman said yes. And mark my words, when you see it, it's a hair product with curlers. She's going to make probably, I would say, $10 million, and I lost $10 million because I uh, uh, couldn't talk fast enough. <laughs> How important is that? How important is it to be able to pull the trigger quickly in your head to make that decision? It's important with all of us, no matter what we do, to be decisive. Because the things you lose in life are not the big mistakes you made, but the things you let get away. So no, you have to think fast, and even if you're wrong, you got to open your mouth and speak up. And I have learned to do that on Shark Tank, but it has been no easy feat. I just read something about you guys thinking about going to a live element, having social media involvement. How cool would that be, to actually have fans and people be able to live interact with what's happening? It would be great, but we'd need a two-hour show. And the real question is, would people tune in for two solid hours? Because it's so chock full. Every pitch we hear is an hour to an hour and a half. And when you see it at home, it's what, seven or eight minutes? Yep. So imagine the editing is key to the show. And now you let everybody weigh in while we're filming. You'd need at least two hours, maybe even 10. Maybe it should be a one time a year marathon. You know? All day Shark Tank. Yeah, yeah, why not? My final question, we are going through the midst of one of the craziest elections of all time, if not the craziest. Yes. What do you think about what's going on? I think that the presidential elections have just turned into Saturday Night Live. It's show business. It's no longer qualifications as who could grab the soundbite. And I think we've had living proof of this. And I think the landscape has changed forever. If you're not good on TV, if you don't have the soundbite just perfect, if you don't know how to create a media storm, you're not going to get elected. It's as simple as that. It's, it's a sad thing, but hey, so the real world of politics has caught up with the phony world of TV.